I offer these every week along with a guided meditation. Just click the uh, subscribe link below to be notified through YouTube when I post the latest recording. Or if you'd like to join us live, which would be great, uh, just go into the description section below and follow the link along to be able to sign up for free. So I'd like to talk tonight, and this is actually a really good segue, to um, a kind of foundational theme for next week's talk on patience, including patience with other people. And the context for all this is that I'm pursuing an ongoing exploration with you uh, that has to do with how do we live together? How can we live together with our roommates, our partners, our children, our parents, our neighbors, our community, our political adversaries, our political comrades? How can we live together at the scale of a country, at the world, as the whole human tribe? How do we do it? So I'm exploring various themes of that. And tonight, I'd like to explore the theme with you of celebrating, appreciating people, people as people, and being a people yourself. This might sound really kind of weird, but if you think about it, Suzuki Roshi, look at that face. <laughs> That's a people. Look at Deepama. That's a people. Contemplate on the Buddha himself. That's another people. And we can appreciate people and people as people while seeing things in another person, seeing things in the people that oneself is, and thinking about room for improvement. It's okay. But I found myself just recently um, listening to my wife. And she was talking about a, you know, kind of a health thing she was grappling with, uh, aggravating, something to think about. And, you know, I kind of looked at her and I was aware, can, you know, ordinary, of the ordinariness of, oh, this is my precious wife's face. Some aging going on here, right? We've been married for 40 years. And I just found myself appreciating her peopleness and thinking, what a blessing it is that I have another person as my comrade, as my mate. And it's not about, my point here, the you know, spouseness of it all. It's more that I could look over there and I could just think, wow, how cool it is to have a human being over there. I'm so I'm really glad she's a human being and not a tyrannosaurus. <laughs> not polar a polar bear, which are very cool, right? If I had to pick some non-human animal to be, I think a polar bear or a grizzly bear would be pretty far out. Um, top of the food chain. I kind of like that idea. But in any case, here is a human being over here. And uh, you know, as human beings, increasingly we can understand the rarity of humanness, the rarity of intelligence, high intelligence in the animal kingdom, the rarity of our fundamental nature with each other that's grounded in caring and sharing, compassion and justice as the foundation of hunter gatherer bands, our evolved nature during the 97% or so of the 300,000 years that we've lived on this planet. Wow. So you can really appreciate how unusual it is to be a human. And there's something about celebrating and appreciating our humanness and the gifts of evolution and all who've gone before us because it's the water we swim in. How do you appreciate being human when you are human? You may know different versions of this um, parable. Uh, David Foster Wallace, bless his memory, uh, wrote about it in a speech or offered it in a speech in a very eloquent way. The simple version is, you know, first fish says to the second fish, good morning, how's the water? Second fish replies, what's water? Humanness is the water we swim in. 
And because it's so familiar to us, it's easy to not even notice it, let alone appreciate it. And so I'm really encouraging us and to explore what's it like to look at people, including people who are aggravating for good reason, to look at them and go, you know, I don't agree with you. I don't like you. I sure don't want to vote for you. I sure don't want to do business with you. I sure don't want to sleep with you. Whatever it may be, whatever it may be. And still, I can celebrate your humanness. I can celebrate and appreciate the fact that you and I belong to the same species and so many causes and conditions came together to manifest as this extremely rare and contingent human species. This all might sound kind of abstract, but it's, it's really not. It's kind of like recognizing that you're in the water and looking over there and going, wow, I'm so glad there are other people. You know, you could do a little thought experiment. Imagine waking up tomorrow morning and you're the only human being left on this earth. Everybody else has disappeared. Maybe they've been lifted up to heaven. Maybe they've hopped into a spaceship. Maybe tragically they've been struck dead. Whatever it is, you're the only one left. What would that be like for you? To be without others. It's real context in which we can hold the kind of ordinary stresses and frustrations and annoyances of other people in the day. You know, to go like, wow. People are amazing. I mean, yes, our species has the capacity among its other unique qualities to be so callous and so cruel to others of our kind. Unlike really any other species, the deliberate, sustained callousness and cruelty of different people against other people and different groups of people, especially against other groups of people, it's unique, it's terrible, it's horrible. It must be regulated, that capacity that we have. And still, the altruism in humanity, the kindness, the moral sensibility in most people, the daily ways in which people cooperate with others that they don't know, make room for the stranger, there's a lovely um, haiku from Basho in, um, centered in Japanese culture, and you can think about it, uh, the culture of cherry blossoms, which appear for just a few days and then start to fall. The haiku is, under the cherry blossoms, there are no strangers. We are all alike. We are joined together in the arising, the appearing, and the passing away of all phenomena, including ourselves. We are not strangers in our common humanity that is born and lives and dies, each one of us. That's a very human sensibility. We can celebrate the human capacity to make beautiful music, to uh, pursue beautiful ideas, to pursue the practice of awakening to offer to us teachings that have come down to us. We can celebrate those things. What happens when we celebrate? You know, I'm thinking about my parents, uh, no longer alive, bless her memory, and they um, were basically really good people, uh, kind of stressed and anxious and, you know, critical, worried, that's how they've expressed their love a lot for their children. And still, I look at them and I go, you know, I can celebrate you. And something shifts inside when we appreciate and celebrate other people and appreciate and celebrate humanity as a whole. I don't know about you, but I'm incredibly grateful to those who have come before. Yes, absolutely. There have been tyrants and warlords since um, farming and herding 
roughly 10,000 years ago, spreading throughout the world, um, started to produce surpluses. Uh, very often, much more often than not, those surpluses were gathered uh, to form concentrations of wealth in growing populations, towns, cities, countries, empires, with growing concentrations of wealth that fostered growing concentrations of power in the few, while the many suffered enormously. I mean, yes, there is, there is certainly that aspect in our history. On the other hand, most people throughout history have done the best they could day to day uh, trying to get along with their neighbors, trying to take good care of their children and their mates and their friends and their family and their kin, um, being decent to strangers, typically, and building things gradually, gradually, along the way, developing technologies, you know, developing um, writing, developing things like the printing press, the internet, science, medicine, the arts, culture, the great spiritual traditions of the world, all kinds of stuff. You know, the, the streets that I walk on, the, the sidewalks that are paved, the trees that have been planted, uh, the developments of so many kinds. I don't know about you. I'm so grateful to so many who've come before. What happens when you feel that gratitude yourself? It really changes things, doesn't it? You start moving through your day. Thank you. Thank you, people. <laughs> Thank you, person walking past. Thank you, person walking past. <laughs> you don't need to walk through the streets saying this. You know, they, they might uh, call the cops and, you know, ha take you into a psych eval. But uh, inside your mind, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, those who've come before. Nameless, countless, billions who've come before. And thank you, those who will come after. I celebrate you. I appreciate you. You know, I wish you well along your way. What, what happens when you, when you feel that? I think lots of good things happen. You know, to look at someone and let's say something has happened that for you is annoying or hurtful or startling disappointing, frustrating, angering, whatever it might be. And even so, be able to look at over there and genuinely feel, I appreciate you as a person. I, I'm, I appreciate your humanness. I'm glad for those qualities in you, your humanness, which we share. Something really shifts when we're irked by others to look at them in that way. And you can look at yourself in the mirror. You can do it right now. You can look at your hand. Wow, thank you, human hand. You can look out at the world with eyes, for most of us at least, maybe not all, especially men, that can see color really quite well. Thank you, color vision. You can observe your own cognitive processes, your own thought processes, and go, thank you. Thank you. You were given the gift of thought. You can't earn it. It was given to you in what's been woven into the blueprint of your body and your DNA. Can you, you know, be glad for your human qualities, your good heartedness, um, your grit, your endurance? We can endure much more than most other animals. Can you appreciate that about yourself? Can you appreciate your physical abilities, being able to walk upright? No other animal can routinely sustain walking upright, which brings so much more into view with legs that can run, arms that can hold. Wow, thank you. Extended childhood of the human species, unique. 
gives us more opportunities to love our children over longer periods, gives us as children longer opportunities to learn and to grow. Thank you. It totally changes your day when you move through your day from time to time, appreciating the gifts of being human, what it is to be human. Thank you. (laughs) As we'll see next week when I get into patience, it's a lot easier to be patient with others while appreciating the gifts of being human. And then this gets really interesting, and it's the topic here that I'll finish up on. It is our nature to take in other people and to internalize our experiences with them and our sense of them. And the psychoanalytic term in part is introjects. We take into ourselves qualities, especially as young children, of our caregivers and others around us. And more broadly, we start to have, you can think of the language of internal family systems or gestalt therapy or a Jungian way of thinking about it. We start having many different people inside, different subpersonalities, uh, different characters sitting around the round table, as it were, or in the village of your mind. It's a common way to think about it. The inner child, the nurturing parent, the critical parent, the inner boy, the inner girl, the the critic, the nurturer, the attacker, the supporter, you know, the hedonist, the renunciate, all these different qualities inside yourself. And so when you look around inside, can you also appreciate the people you find there. The title of Richard Schwartz, the founder of Internal Family System, the title of his most recent book is No Bad Parts, referring to the parts of ourselves. Can you look at the different parts of yourself and in some ways look inside and go, no bad people. No bad people inside. Definitely some of the people inside need some regulation. Definitely there's some people inside that should not be given the microphone 100% of the time. And there are definitely people inside that could use the microphone more and could use some kindness, some encouragement, some calling forth, some foregrounding of them at center stage, maybe pushing some other inner people somewhat to the aside to, you know, be quiet for now and let others speak. You know, there can be an inner regulation of the people inside you, much like there can be an outer regulating or influencing or coming to terms with the people around you. But with the people inside, you can regulate them while looking at them with, with appreciation, with kindness, with blessing, with gratitude. Thank you. You could do this as an exercise, looking at the people inside yourself and thanking each one of them. Thank you, inner critic. I've learned a lot from you. Now, settle down. <laughs> Thank you, inner nurturer. I've gotten so much from you. And honestly, I, I would really love it if you step forward even more. Right? Thank you, inner playful child. You've done so much for me, and I I need to make more room for you. Thank you. Just imagine that exercise. Thank you, the Buddha within. Thank you, inner teacher. Every single one, thank you for being a people, a person, a human inside me. Similarly, thank you out there in the outer world. And... To finish here, again, I hope it's clear. I'm not talking about something merely abstract, like, oh, yeah, fine. No, I'm talking about a real experience, a kind of recognition of the water of humanness we swim in. Thank you, water. Thank you, humanness. Thank you, human culture. Thank you what's been handed to us from our ancestors and the lineage, our our forebears. Um, Thank you, all those who've suffered 
Thank you, all those who've been mistreated. Thank you, all those who've made the world just a little bit better in your own life, in some small way or large one. Thank you. It shifts when you relate to humanity in this way and relate to yourself in this way and relate to the people inside you in this way. It's very palpable. It's very real. And I invite you into this. What's it like to look at a person you don't know? Look at their face. Look at their their body, their bearing, and go, you are human. I appreciate your humanness. I appreciate your humanness distinct from the wall behind you, the chair you're sitting in, other animals you could be. I appreciate your humanness. I'm not against other kinds of animals. I'm just for your humanness. I'm glad for it. Thank you. Thank you for your humanness. I mean, if we began our arguments or quarrels, you know, <laughs> on CNN, when they get the talking heads arguing with each other, left and right, they just both started by saying, thank you for human for your humanness. Thank you for your humanness. And now let's talk about what we differ on. But let's start with where we're common in our humanness. Right? Wow. That's pretty good. Let's be clear. In a funny kind of way, some people are asking the question about healthy boundaries, especially for those who are more empathic. In a funny way, when we appreciate the generic humanness, I'm using that word generic deliberately, when we appreciate the generic, innate humanness of a person that, let's say, is invasive or disappointing or you know, stressful in some way. There's friction there. When we appreciate the generic givenness of their humanness, it actually helps us stabilize and get some perspective about them so that we don't feel so invaded by them. It Try it. Get it, you know, appreciate their kind of innate generic humanness that's, that's impersonal. It's not about their personality. In a funny way, then their personality doesn't loom so large. <laughs> it's not so impactful. They're just doing humanness in a certain kind of way that you might want to deal with by stepping back from or swerving around or, or directly engaging or you know, appreciating the value of certain aspects while letting the rest go by. It's a lot easier to um, you know, appreciate particular things if you could just kind of see their generic humanness. Try it. It's kind of wild. Yeah. Oh, is it Isa? Thank you, Dan, for correcting me at 10 minutes past. I thought it was Basho. Under a cherry tree, there are no strangers, Dan Brooke points out at 10 minutes past the hour, by the Japanese poet Kobayashi Isa. You've pointed this out before, Dan. I'll try to remember it this time. Isa. Great. All right. Uh, interesting, Barbara, for example, can talk so, at seven minutes past the hour, talks about some of the things that we can appreciate um, in others, particularly, and be grateful for. She writes, as I waited for tr AAA for a tow for her car a couple of weeks ago, myriad people stopped to see if I needed help. A policeman stopped and moved my car off the road to a safer place. I was overwhelmed with gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mary writes at seven minutes past the hour, I can feel sad and downcast and go to a coffee place and just sit there having my coffee and not knowing anyone or talking to anyone, but just feeling better. Slowly but surely, just by being in the presence of other people. So I think what I'd like to do in the remaining time, I see that Isadora has raised her hand, but somehow, Isadora, you have not moved to the front of the Zoom screen. So I don't know why I'm not seeing you. 
So I'm going to try to respond to Isadora. And Isadora, ask a clear question that's succinct and related to what we're talking about here tonight. And then more generally, yeah, I'm not seeing you, Isadora. And I'm only seeing five Zoom windows, even though there are 375 people. So I'll try to figure this out. But meanwhile, and I may not be able to get to you, Isadora, tonight. I'm sorry. We might be having a technical weirdness here. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah, so Isadora, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Yes, here we go. And turn on your camera, okay? And be succinct, because I want to leave a couple minutes at the end for a little experiential practice. Okay, Isadora. Yes. Thank you for taking. Um, I might think about uh, all your talks, and thank you. I appreciate all your talks in Zoom. I've been joining and staying alive here um coping with a lot but recently um just getting a little anxious because uh you know times i feel like i feel like a rat in this world like you know like like um you know like 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 worlds like a lab rat right and there's yeah. moments that i don't feel that way but there's moments that i feel like you know go to work get up in the morning go to work contribute you know oh, yeah. hopefully one day retired so I'm sure a lot of people can relate. And what's your question? So my question has to do with um, pretty soon I'll be going on vacation with my family, my mom and sisters, and never been with them. This is the first time we're all together. Just wondering okay. what what you recommend. I'm gonna practice what you ah uh -huh, okay me yeah, but I'm still nervous. Yeah yeah yeah. Can I give you three suggestions? And these come directly from my own experience with family and others. Okay, you ready? All right. And uh, the first is just take good care of yourself. Make sure you drink water, you eat food, get enough protein, try to get enough rest. Uh, don't agree to do things that are not good for you. Take care of yourself. That right there. Really basic, especially if you're a person who's been trained by society to first take care of others and last take care of yourself. Turn it around. Take care of yourself. Really important. One way I take care of myself um, is that I, I have my own transportation, you know, or I, I try to. I try to be able to leave. I try to be able to find time for myself. I like being able to have to be able to close the door. I need respite from other people. I might hide in the bathroom for 10 minutes reading a book just to get some quiet uh, from other people. Um, take care of yourself. That's my first suggestion. My second suggestion is stay out of stupid arguments. <laughs> don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Just let it go by. They're giving you advice you don't want to take. You don't need to argue with it. Just, oh, thank you. Could you pass the salt? You know, oh, thank you. Do you want more lemonade? Right? Just as much as you can. Don't let people abuse you. That goes with my first suggestion. But other second suggestion, just stay out of trouble as much as you can. Right? My third suggestion is, <clears throat> is to let other people have their time and to be the person in the group who's least interested in impressing others and least feeling the need to prove herself to others. And the person who's most spacious for other people. And it's very interesting in group environments, it's usually true that the person who is least trying to be impressive is the person who eventually most impresses other people, right? And it, it's a wonderful place to be in because when you're mainly listening to others and being interested and finding what there is to like about them, and finding what you can agree with about them, right? If you give other people that kind of presence, they are much less likely to give you a hard time. <laughs> they are much less likely to get mad at you or find fault with you because you're not resisting anything and you're giving them what they long for. While still, while still following the first two, I'll call them rules, 
I rarely offer rules. I'll call these Rick's rules for a family vacation. Take care of yourself, stay out of stupid arguments, and um, be receptive and present for other people. Okay, those are my suggestions, and I better finish up here. I hope that was useful for you. Yes, thank you. I will report back. Okay, report back. Please do, especially in the chat. Definitely report back. Then everybody can see Isadora. Thank you very much. Um, so as we finish here, I want to invite you to just look at some of the people you can see on Zoom. Just click through the screens and just take a second to register that they are a human being. Like just the different people and go, wow, I can appreciate your humanness. You are a human. And in a really beautiful way, by appreciating your humanness, extraordinary gift of being human is the water we swim in. So easy to be unaware of it. It takes you into appreciating your own humanness. I definitely appreciate your humanness. And I appreciate being able to be a human <laughs> who can hang out with you in this marvelous way. I appreciate all those humans who enabled the technology that let us do this and the humans who've been my dear teachers and the humans who've been their teachers and their teachers. <laughs> 